Chapter 5, Strangers in Paradise Lost As George and Harold walked down the hallway of the school, they noticed that something seemed wrong. Very wrong. But they couldn't figure out what it was. Miss Anthrope, the unbelievably crappy school secretary, passed by the boys and smiled kindly. Why, hello, George and Harold, she said. It's so good to see you two. Have a wonderful day. George and Harold looked at her suspiciously. Um, what just happened? asked Harold. I don't know, said George, but something strange sure is going on. George and Harold opened their locker and carefully put crackers and Sulu inside. Shh, they're asleep, said George. Good, said Harold. They can take a nap while we get to class. On the way to their homeroom, George and Harold stopped to switch the letters around on the lunch menu sign. But just as they were finishing, their principal, Mr. Crop, caught them red-handed. Hey, bubs, he said. What are you kids throwing out here? Uh, um, George stammered. You see, we were, um... Please eat my plum juicy boogers, Mr. said Mr. Crop, giggling with glee. That's going to be the funniest thing I've seen all day. You boys really cracked me up. You're hilarious. Then, with a spring in his step, Mr. Crop pranced away, whistling a merry tune. Um, what just happened? asked Harold. Shh, whispered George. Look! George pointed at two kids who were coming toward them, reading a homemade comic book. The kid on the left had a t-shirt and a flat top. The one on the right had a tie and a bad haircut. Please feel free to remember that now if you wish. It's, it's us! whispered George. How can they be us? whispered Harold. I thought we were us. George and Harold hid behind the trash can as the two look likes walked toward them. They stopped in front of the lunch menu sign and frowned. Then a devilish look came over their faces as they quickly began rearranging the letters. The strange boys snickered wickedly as they sneaked away from their prank. Um, what just happened? asked Harold. I think I figured it out, said George. Chapter 6. The World According to George I think the Purple Party brought us to some kind of strange backwards universe, said George. No way, said Harold. That kind of thing only happens in poorly written children's stories whose authors have clearly begun running out of ideas. Here, I'll prove it, said George. The two friends walked to the cafeteria and took a whiff. That's weird, said Harold. It doesn't smell like dirty diapers, greasy dishwater, and moldy tennis shoes in here anymore. It smells like... like food! Yep, said George. Next, the boys went to the gymnasium. That's weird, said Harold. Our gym teacher isn't fat anymore, and he's not being incredibly cruel to the non athletic kids like usually, he usually is. Yep, said George. Finally, George and Harold stepped outside. That's weird, said Harold. All of our evilest and most terrifying enemies from the past have been miraculously transformed into good guys. Yep, said George. Chapter 7, Getting Out of Town George and Harold ran back to their locker. Let's grab Crackers and Sulu and get out of this crazy place, said George. Good idea, said Harold. But when they opened the locker door, their two friends were missing. Where the heck are Crackers and Sulu? cried George. I don't know, said Harold. Nobody else has, nobody else has the combination to our locker. Nobody else except... Our twins! gasped George. Harold tried to shut their locker, but the door jammed on something. What's that? asked George. Looks like a comic book, said Harold. He held it up and read the front cover out loud. At that moment... George and Harold began to get a dreadful sense of the horror they were up against. Chapter 8 The Preposterous Plight of Captain Blunderpants The Preposterous Plight of Captain Blunderpants by Harold Hutchins and George Beard 
Once upon a time, there lived two evil children named George and Harold. I'm bad. I'm bad as a world. They had a very nice principal who went by the name of Mr. Krupp. Hello, boys. Have a pleasant day. Whatever. One day, George and Harold hypnotized Mr. Krupp. You will obey us. Yes, sir. They made him think it was an evil villain. You are now Captain Blunderpants. All right. George and Harold made Captain Blunderpants do all sorts of evil things. Steal us a video game system. Okay. And Captain Blunderpants obeyed. Crash. Steal us a big screen television. Okay. Crash. I'm so happy I could cry. Me too. Uh-oh. Crash. Soon, George and Harold had the world's coolest tree house. Do you boys need anything else? Yeah, how about a pizza? Sure thing. And so, crash. Hold it right there, Captain Blunderpants. You've stolen TVs, jacuzzis, pop machines, massage chairs, and disco balls. But this time you've gone too far. You're under arrest for Grand Theft Pizza. You've got to catch me first. Zip! And the chase was on. Soon, Captain B was chased onto the freeway. When suddenly, oh no! Hey, look out! Screech! Yeah! Crash. The strange mixture of chocolate, peanut butter, and extra cheese combined to create a super powerful chemical reaction. Sizzle, sizzle. Which gave Captain Blunderpants amazing superpowers. I feel super! Sizzle. La la tra! Then, here is your pizza, boys. Hey, where's the pineapple? Crash. Wow, just think of all the evil things we could do now. Was Captain Blunderpants, our evil superpowered villain, will be able to get away with anything. Soon the entire world will, will be ours. <laughs> Epilogue. Oh, by the way, when ca whenever Captain Blunderpants hears someone snap his fingers, snap, he turns back to Mr. Krupp. Have a swell day. And whenever Mr. Krupp gets water on his head, he turns back to Captain Blunderpants. <sighs> Remember that now. Evil Tree House Comics LLC. Chapter 9. Not without my hamster and my pterodactyl. I think our evil twins made this comic book, said Harold. They must have, said George. The auto work is really bad and I'm pretty sure they misspelled some words. Let's get out of here, said Harold. Not without Crackers and Sulu, said George. George and Harold ran to a window and looked out. They... There they saw their two evil twins sneaking home, carrying their beloved pets with them. Sulu and Crackers have no idea what's going on, said George. They, they think those two guys are us. How in the world are we ever going to stop, are we going to, are we going to stop us, asked Harold. 